I take great deal of pleasure in presenting to you today as our guest speaker, Dr. Werner von Braun. We will establish an advanced piece in the orbit, a thousand miles above the Earth. This advanced piece, or space station, will be headquarters for the final ascent to the moon. Our space satellite will have the shape of a wheel, measuring 200 feet across. Its outside rim will contain living and working quarters for a crew of 50 men. Just below the radio and radar antenna is the atomic reactor. Its seat will be used to drive a turbo generator, which supplies the station with electricity. Access to the station will be through an airlock in the hub. The three large spokes are elevator shafts, and the small pipes are used as condensers for the turbo generator and the air conditioning plant. The entire wheel will slowly rotate at three revolutions per minute. The resulting centrifugal force will produce an artificial gravity for the men in the rim. This entire space station will have to be prefabricated and tested on the ground. After dismantling, it will be transported in pieces up to the orbit. When the day arrives for construction to begin, the thousands of parts for the space station will be transported to the orbit by our multi-stage rockets. On the ground, the first of the cargo rockets is ready for takeoff. The cargo rocket is fired. While its motors are firing, the cargo rocket is controlled by an automatic pilot, like a guided missile. Construction of the space wheel now begins. The sides of the cargo nose are mechanically separated. Built in tanks, compressed air inflate this large plastic inner section of the hub. Every 24 hours, another cargo rocket will arrive in the orbit. Each succeeding load is carefully scheduled so that the parts of the station can be assembled in correct order. When the airlock is attached, the pressurized hub section can be used as temporary quarters for eating and sleeping. Next, the atomic reactor is installed. The wheel begins to take shape now as the three main spokes and rim sections are joined together. Condenser pipes are fitted next so that the atomic reactor may be put in operation. The shell of the station is completed. Finally, two small rocket motors on the rim, lasting for a few seconds, will set the wheel in permanent motion to revolve three times a minute. As life on the station settles down to routine, the large reflecting telescopes will begin their work. One telescope photographs the surface of the Earth. Another keeps a constant watch on the Earth's weather, while the third is trained on our next objective, the moon.